We want to be competitive. Um, I think it was one of those things that we, we don't want to, you know, obviously do too much, work efficiently, but at the same time, um, this is camp and we got a lot to put in. So it's really important for us to just dial in, gut it out, you know, push yourself, push the guys around you because we'll look back at these days and wish we, we did or wish we had. And I, I don't want to live with that regret that come opening night, we, we just don't have enough in or we're not in the right place, right mindset. We're not in peak condition. Um, so all those things is just like, hey, we got to get it done. So find, find the energy somewhere. You got an off day tomorrow uh, and gut it out. Right. Do, do you learn anything topic in that, in that space? Yes and yes. I think it's, uh, you know, to get, get to know them on their terms, on their space, um, you know, kind of in their, in their environment, you know, how they work, some of the things that they're working on kind of gives you insight in, into uh, maybe this is good for, for us during the season or maybe we can shy away from that. Um, but just the, his work ethic, his approach. Uh, but it was just a great opportunity to spend some time um, go see him work out in the gym, go see him work out, you know, hit the weights, some of the uh, core strength, strengthening things that he d does is very unique. Um, so it's really impressive sometimes when you, when you watch these guys get through their workouts. Um, you know, they have trainers and, and people that are, they work with all summer. These, these, these people do a great job. Flashback to Denver, the Wizards were there. Old Meadow made and un see you're already smiling. You already know what I'm gonna say. He made such a defensive play, heady play that really was that I still remember. And I just asked him about it. When you saw him for the first time here, did you remember that on recall? We didn't speak for a couple of days because of that. <laughs> but that has to as a new coach knowing that guy is at least locked in defensively, yeah. and I yeah. know he'll do anything on that end of the floor. Mm -hmm. How much does that help kind of like in the relationship and trying to get things done this week? That helps a lot. I mean, cause you, you know, from the outside looking in, you kind of have a perception of a player. Um, you know, when you play in the, in the West, you see a team twice, that might not be the real, um, the real deal. So when you get a chance to actually be around him, like that's what he's about. That's who he is. That's how he impacts the game. Um, it's, it, it's valuable. Uh, and it's funny because he's close to one of the assistants that I worked with in Denver. So um, having that commonality, we were already via text, you know, kind of reaching out to each other and going back and forth with certain things, even before we met in person. So that foundation I thought was, was laid early. Um, and it's something that uh, we're going to need, you know, and I know it's, uh, it's tough some nights. Uh, he gives up some size, but I look at a guy like Faku Compazzo, um, what he lacks in size, he, he brings in heart and effort and energy. Uh, and he can be a pest. It really just kind of gets under people's skin, and he can really change a game for you. I just want to talk defense and just your shells, what you're putting in now, from what their attention mm -hmm. or retention is to it. What does it look like four days in? It's gotten better, and I think you know the challenge is not only to continue to grow, continue to retain some of the things, but get more application because the drills are great. You know, that's controlled environment. You stop it at a certain point. Everybody's moving in concert, everything, everything, everybody's talking, but now it's, you get to the live segments, you lose some of that. Um, and to get more and more carryover, the more live stuff you do. Um, that, I think that's the hardest part when you're putting in a new system is getting that, you know, that carryover from drills to, to live. What are the unique core things that like? I, I couldn't even describe it, honestly, because <laughs> I certainly can't do it. Uh, <laughs> But just, you know, with the kettlebells and, uh, you know, some of the, the stretching, um, the strengthening, the core strengthening, uh, it, it's unique. And it's, it's pretty impressive when you see a guy do some of those things. Like, he's, he's one of the strongest pound per pound, per pound guys we have on this club. Hey, Coach, I um, just want to ask about your adjustment to this new job. Um, after four days of training camps, have there been any discoveries or surprises about the job? Uh, I'd say probably more surprises um, in that there's so much more to it than I thought. <laughs> 
And you kind of know that before you get in it, but you really don't know until you're really immersed in it. So um, just the number of, of, of things that you have to get done aside from basketball. Uh, and it's, you know, the managing of people component, uh, organizing things that you don't even think about as an assistant. Uh, but that comes with the territory. It's part of the learning curve. Uh, and I've got great people to kind of help me navigate some of this. But when all those decisions come down to you, it, it, at times you're like, okay, I got to go to this other thing. Uh, it kind of detracts from what happens between the lines. So I'm just going to have to cope with it and deal with it and do the best I can. But uh, that's probably been the biggest, you know, eye-opening thing is just how much more than basketball there is to do. Do you have any time to sleep? I mean, how long <laughs> is that? Uh, I mean that's about normal. Um, I try to, I got to do better with that the work-life balance. And it's, it's something not only for myself, but staff, I think you're more efficient when you're rested, but trying to find that happy medium. Um, it's not unique to me or any other coach. It's just, that's a league thing that we as coaches have to do a better job. Um, but pick and choose. I mean, you, know, you have to ask, you know, what's important in that moment, get it done uh, and find ways to remove yourself, decompress and spend time with family. Going into training camp, uh, did anyone who has been in your position before uh, give you any advice and um, anything stick out? Oh, plenty. Um, and that, that's been extremely helpful. In uh, each situation, it takes on a life of its own. There are, there's not, you know, one situation that's going to be all the same, the dynamic of your team, the makeup of your group. Sometimes it's the age of, of your team may, may change some of the things you can do and can't do. Um, but just, you know, you got to pick your own path and take your time, uh, decide what you want to do, you lay, lay down your foundations and just be you. Don't overthink it. Just kind of take day to day and, and do the best you can. Um, when it comes to uh, bringing in rookies and, and young players, do you kind of generally follow a similar step-by-step uh, -step process with each guy or does it kind of depend on their experience level before they got here and kind of their understanding and, and that sort of stuff? Yeah, I think it's, you know, at first, it's kind of step-by-step, -step, but they'll show you where they are. Um, each individual player's maturation is going to be different. And, you know, trying to expedite it too soon, I think you're, you're probably putting them at a disadvantage. If they're not ready for it, you're, you're kind of throwing them to the wolves. So at times, yeah, I think you have to push them out of their box a little bit, you know, get a little bit more from them, expose them to more. And I think that helps their development. But you want to also put them in a situation where they can have success. I mean, that's how you, you build that confidence. If every time they go through something, it's like it doesn't work out. I think that kind of, you know, that can play on your mind a little bit. And uh, we asked uh, Corey Pittsburgh about his cutting ability. Obviously, a lot of us know about his shooting, but he said he worked a lot on uh, cutting last year and it seemed to show up in the summer league. Mm -hmm. um, what have you seen from him in that regard, and what do you think is going to be key to him translating that to the next level? Well, I think you said it. His shooting is one thing, and that's, that, that's going to be a constant. Teams are going to guard him as a shooter because they know that's just who he is and what he can do. But the, the cutting is just, it's just as impactful giving yourself up, that's going to ignite tags. And once again, the amount of shooting we can put around him, around Brad, Spencer, uh, DB, all these guys, Danny, it's uh, you, you got Kuz who can handle. <laughs> so th that cutting, that's going to orchestrate tags. And the minute that happens, somebody's open. Hey, you guys are off tomorrow and then you travel Sunday. Have you even gotten to that head space of how you're going to play starters how are you going to do the preseason so far at least in that first game yeah i think it's it you want to get everyone a, a look i don't think it behooves as much to play it in a real sense you want to see quality minutes with your core group uh with your top eight or nine but it will probably treat the last two preseason preseason games as more real games as far as minutes um but I think we just want to look at everybody, try some things, um, try some different units, some different lineups, different combinations, um, and just get a, get a foundation of, like, does this translate from practice? Uh, see how that looks. Yeah, yep, yeah. OK, we'll go over to Zoom for a few questions. We'll start with Neil. 
coach. Uh, first off, were there any uh, rookie duties for singing happy birthday to Daniel? Say again? D did any of the rookies have rookie duties to sing to Daniel? Yes, that, uh, that's a longstanding tradition. <laughs> so they, they sang yesterday to Aaron. They, they sang to, to Daniel. So uh, I know they're going to get tired of it, but, hey, well, we all had to do it. I had to do it as a young coach. So uh, just embrace and go with it. Gotcha. And, you know, I know, you know, you guys are not going to pressure Rui or, you know, do anything like that when he's ready to come back. I'm sure you guys will welcome him with full arms. But are you guys still in communication with him? Do you guys see this as a, you know, maybe in a few days he might be back or is it potentially a long term thing or is that still up in the air? I think it's, you know, it's, it's kind of up in the air. It's, it's not really uh, an issue for us. I think, you know, with a personal matter, it, when it's when it's time, it's time. Um, and he's been in constant communication with us, which is great. So uh, we'll know, but uh, th there's no pressure. There's no uh, imminent uh, issue with him being here at this point. Uh, take care of the business he needs to take care of, and uh, we'll leave it at that. Understood. Thanks, Coach. Mm -hmm. And we will take the last questions from Christos. Hello, Coach. Hope you're doing well. How satisfied you are about the way that your players react uh, through your advices, guidelines, and stuff like this so far? Um, I'm, I didn't hear the whole question. I apologize. Yeah. How how satisfied you are about the way that your players react so far in this training camp? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm very satisfied. I mean, I think it's it's on us as coaches and staff uh, to continue to, to push because we, we always want more. Uh, we talked about that leadership from within. So we're starting to see more and more of that where guys, uh, especially the vets, are stepping up. And, you know, when, when they have something to say, they add it, you know, when they uh, want to hold each other accountable. So it's satisfying to see some of the same messaging being relayed, not necessarily coming from myself, my staff, but from within. Um, I think, once again, if we can continue to foster that mindset, uh, individual accountability uh, with, you know, trusting that your, your teammates are, are there to help you, I think that builds a, a solid, you know, group that's going to coalesce at the right time. And for you, do you have any chip on your shoulder? Or do you feel any pressure about your first uh, job as a head coach this season? Of course. I mean, it's it's a natural pressure. Um, regardless of me being a head coach, assistant coach, it, the pressure is now different. You know, it's it's at a much higher stake because um, obviously I'm, I'm in charge of the, you know how everything plays out. But, you know, you still, I still felt that as an assistant, you know, this is a results driven, driven business. And that's what we're here for. We're trying to get those desired results. So there is that inherent pressure and that's probably more uh, pressure I'm putting on myself than anything, but uh, it, it, it comes with it. So it's just going to have to be something I deal with. Um, I mean, I think it's just, it's not today, it's the three days before. Um, Usually the first day you're excited and everybody, you know, have an energy. <clears throat> Second day, you're still there. Third day, you start to get tired. And then fourth day is usually the one that gets you. But I think we got a, we got a young group. Everybody has good energy. And uh, I did not feel that from anybody else. I feel like that's more <laughs> me. I don't know how everybody else is feeling. But um, usually it's the day, usually the day before a day off is the one that, that it's harder. Yes. Seven players left in the playoff team, and you were the last one. You know, you're the one that came back. What was it about this situation that made you want to come back? Um, I don't think it was about the team last year. Of course, I had the opportunity to play more than I did years before. Um, it was about the organization and, and the way they want to go. Um, honestly, even before all the change, I, my mind was coming back. You know, I wanted to come back even before. Uh, the changes, but I think it's the organization, um, um, the experience I had last year with the with the team, everything. I think uh, make me want to be back this year. What have practices been like so far at the point guard position specifically? Because um, you know it seems like there's a lot of defensive talent on the depth chart right now. Yeah, uh, we've been rotating a lot. You know, of course, last year. Um, I mean, I'm a point guard, but I think last year I played the two, three, sometimes even the four, you know, um, and um, I'm, I'll be out there uh, to play at the position coach wants me to play. If it's the point guard, great. If it's not, I'll, I'll give my 100% like I did last year. Uh, but yeah, we've been switching a lot. We've been uh, um, 
I think everybody has been playing every position a little bit. You know, me and Aaron being uh, playing one and two, and sometimes we play in different teams, but uh, it's been interesting. What's it been like uh, going up against him? Have you been able to face Aaron and, and Spencer so far in, in scrimmages? And, and just kind of what, what is it like, uh, you know, the competitiveness? Uh, yeah, I think I knew before having uh, training camp, I played against them. Uh, years before, uh, they're both great point guards, competitive. Uh, Aaron super strong, and uh, you know plays hard. Uh, um, Spencer also coming coming back from injury, just you know wanting to 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 make that next step. Um, they're both very talented. They're both great players. It's been a, it's been fun to compete against them. It'll be even better playing with them on the court. Oh, I feel like you talked to me so much last year about how beat up you got by the end of the season. Like there was always a, an injury. How how long into the I think I'm not there yet. <laughs> you know, I, I thought I thought after two weeks I was gonna be. You know, I'm gonna take a couple weeks off and uh, be a hundred percent to go back to work. And then those th two weeks went on and I wasn't still there. And then I took another one and I took another one. After a month, I was like, okay, I don't think I can take another week before I go back to work. But um, but I definitely uh, got better. You know, I definitely um, you know I think as a professional athlete, you almost never at 100%. You always have some kind of issue going on, some something that you have to work on. And I think that's where I am right now, but I feel great. I feel great on the court. I feel great, you know, uh, working in the weight room, working with the training staff and uh, my body's definitely in a better spot than than how I ended last year. What do you take from last season to this what you learned about being in this organization? Obviously the playoffs were tough for you guys, but what kind of, when you went into the off season, you had time off, what were you like, okay, this is, I want to approach next season. This is what I want to work on. Um, I think individually is um, like I've been doing mostly the last two week, two uh, seasons. You know, just working on my body, working on my game, trying to find ways to m make the the rotation, find ways to help the team, and uh, coming into a new team. That was one of the things that I was kind of um, mentally getting ready for it. You know, I didn't know what I was gonna see with uh, with Coach West and. Uh, with the new players, you know, of course, I'm in the same team I played last year, but it's totally different players and coach. So um, I just came with the open minded to, you know, learn and to uh, take every little uh, adjustment, every little things that he's introducing to our team on the court and just take advantage of it. And like I said before, uh, work hard to 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 help the team how how I can. Um, speaking of working on your body, I mentioned the other day how ripped you were. <laughs> I just, is this a, a particular point of emphasis for you this offseason, or is this something you work on every offseason? I mean, I don't work to look good. <laughs> um, I work to to feel good on the court and to feel strong and to feel quick and, and you know, explosive. Um, but definitely when you, you have some time to um, – Eat, eat well and sleep well, things that usually during the season you can, you know, you're traveling and you get to the city at 2 a.m. You have to wake up. Last year was getting tested. We have to wake up and you don't sleep well and sometimes you don't eat well either. So taking that time off to do that and being able to, you know, just do the things, have a routine, I think that helps uh, me just, I don't know, get my body where I want to be um, to start the season and then try to 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 take along with the season you know as as much as i can jack never tells me i look good so <laughs> <laughs> uh, i want to ask you about daniel gafford obviously he made a huge difference when he got here mid-season last year have you noticed anything different about him coming into his first full year here in, in a higher comfort level or anything like that i mean he's excited for sure i've seen him working all summer you know with coach alex and uh working on his game um he definitely know his role on the team, uh, but he has this mentality that he can add things to his game. You know, he can add, uh, uh, I don't know, a mid range, or he can add things that will make him game his game even uh, better. You know, I mean, we all know that uh, he got athleticism. He protects the rim. His rolling is probably one of the best in the league. You know, just because how athletic he is, and he can uh, play above the rim, the rim, and. Uh, but he's definitely excited. He's definitely like put a lot of work this summer and I'm excited to see what he can do for us.
you don't go through a chase. Right? <laughs> and that's why he don't stay, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you like chronicle like plays of a year for you. Like you look back and go, oh man, I remember that play. But one thing that stood out to me was the Denver defensive play that you made. What statement do you think a play like that can make over the course of a season and maybe even in a game? Because it was it was such a heady play that I, I'm sure even maybe your, your teammates in the locker room even said that might have been the play of the game. Yeah, I mean, it definitely marks something. I mean, the fact that you remember um, shows that those kind of plays can impact uh, more the game than the season. Um, but if you have me doing having a play like that one game and somebody else, I think it shows the spirit of the team. And I think that's what our team was about last year. You know, just the way we made the playoffs, nobody expected numbers was against us. People did not think we we're going to make the playoffs. And I think that grit and, you know, that, um, I don't know, believing in, you know, that play specifically, I don't think if you look <laughs> beginning of the play, nobody thought that I was going to get that, that basketball and I, but I believed it and I, I went and, and got it, you know, I think that's, I feel like that's what I can bring, you know, on the court and definitely, I don't know um, if you change a season, but definitely you can change a game for sure. Okay. We're going to switch over to zoom. We'll start with Neil. Hey, oh, good to see you. Um, First off, you got to tell them you can't be trying to challenge Daniel Gafford dunks. Uh, team just posted that video. They got to get someone bigger to do that. What video? There was a video of Daniel uh, dunking, and then you you were the guy contesting. They got to give you a better better advantage there. Oh, they set me up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so obviously, you know, building off Ava's question, you're a unique situation where you're returning to an organization, but you know, whole new philosophy, whole new coaching staff. What can you kind of compare and contrast, you know, how much that is trying to get up to speed versus you already know some of the things up to speed from the organization side? I mean, as far as basketball, I think we are uh, introducing a lot of new uh, words and, and a lot of, uh, you know, details, you know, um, I think we have to build a foundation, you know, defensively most, most of it. Um, I think practices has been, uh, more about that, you know, building a foundation, building, you know, rules that we're going to follow throughout the season. And, and of course, I think uh, every season you make adjustments and you uh, have a game plan that changes every every team you play. But um, until now, it's been a lot of uh, details, a lot of, you know, a lot of the basics uh, that, that we've been doing uh, on the court. And, and so, so far, you know, both of your years that you've been here, you know, last year, you were also technically coming into a new system. This year, again, you're also coming into a new system. Last year was, you know, crazy with COVID. There was non-existent training camp. Do you feel like this season is, you know, somewhat back to a semblance of normal with, okay, you guys have been here for a few weeks now and really able to get the time to set that foundation that you didn't have last year? I mean, we hope so. We don't know yet. You know, uh, last year we thought that was going to be the case, but then COVID hit a couple teams and then you stopped. But I mean, we hope we are back to normal. Um, we hope that we can have fans. We hope we can, like you said, uh, know for sure what's going to happen and plan our season and plan, you know, practices and all, and all of that. But um, I think the one thing that I learned from all this situation is just like focus on today, you know, just uh, we got to work hard today. We got to think about who we playing tomorrow and who we play next and, and just work with that. You know, there's a lot of things that we can't control that we can cannot do anything about it. So um, I think or my mindset and our team, too, is just, you know, take day by day and, and uh, get better every day. Thanks, Howell. Enjoy the off day. Thank you. And last questions will go to Christos. Hello, Raul. How are you? Good. Great. Uh, a lot, uh, some new pieces in the team, new coaching staff. How beneficial is this for you about your growth as a player? And what did you learn from uh, Coach Anselt and your new teammates so far in this, in this training camp? Um, I think, uh, I, I mean, no matter if we have the same coach, same team, or if I go to a different team, I think my mindset, my mentality will be the same. So, 
Um, I don't think that changes me trying to get better and me trying to be the best player I can be. Um, but of course, when you have new teammates and new coaches, you learn things and, you know, if you can take the good things that you learn from other teams and other coaches and put it together with the new th new things that you're uh, learning now, I think that's a, that's an advantage for me. Um, we're still kind of learning to play with each other. You know, we've, like I said before, we've, we've uh, uh, switched teams and play with different players on the court. So we, I'm still learning how, you know, uh, mantras like to play, how uh, uh, Aaron likes to play and, and playing one and the two. So um, it's only been four days, but it's, it's definitely being a, a good training camp. What do you feel like you've been able to work on individually or get better at um, over the training camp so far? Um, I would say um, just being, you know, a vocal leader. You know, I, I've been able to, you know, uh, you know, voice my opinion, you know, on things I see, you know, that, that we can do better. Or, you know, if I see something that we're doing wrong, you know, try to correct it. Um, uh, with the younger guys. You know, uh, no, I'm just that's pretty much you no, know, the, the most uh, the most thing I've been working on this this, this train camp. Um, I forget. Oh, Spencer, who shared, he said that Brad had a very inspirational speech at the the dinner before the it's called an MLK effect. Yeah. Um, what what was kind of the message that he shared with you guys? Were you similarly inspired by by Brad? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was inspired. You know, I never you know really heard him talk like that. You know, uh, you know, me and him is just, you know, friends. We joke, you know, buddy, buddy. Uh, but him seeing him just being a little serious, you know, being that 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 leader. Uh, you know, it was shocking, you know, but I was happy for him. Uh, you know, we uh, uh, understood everything he said he was saying, you know, and we're just going to take it and apply it. You know, he he was talking about just being like, like I was talking about early, you know, that, that, that one unit. You know, you know, doing everything together, you know, even uh, today, you know, we had like a players only meeting, you know, and that's what we talked about, you know, holding each other accountable, you know, and, uh, you know, they're just being there for each other. This is uh, technically your third team, your second time joining a new team after your career started. Just uh, did you learn anything from that experience previously when you went from like Detroit to LA, but now that you're going from LA, you can see it's like to kind of start out. Is there anything you've done differently? No, I wouldn't say. And I feel like I've just, you know, uh, adapted to, to every environment that I've been in, you know, uh, and that's what I'm here to do. You know, adapt to this environment, you know, uh, and play play as hard as I did for um, for the organ or other organization. I play hard you know, for this organization, you know, stay within myself uh, and just be me. You know, that's, I, mean, I feel like that's the only thing I know how to do. Um, and what are your impressions of uh, Wes on Sub Jr. now that you've uh, been through some practices with him? Uh, just kind of what type of coach and what type of guy are you kind of seeing so far? Um, very, you know, relaxed, you know, chill. Uh, he, he's on really on point, you know, he's he trying to teach us, you know, uh, you know, detail by detail. Um, you know, he also give us that, you know, that, that dialogue where we can, you know, give our opinion and he, you know, and he elaborates on it and as, as, as well, you know, and I, and I, I like that, you know, being able to, to have that type of dialogue with the coach. You know, he listened and then, you know, we listened to him as well. Uh, it's been just, you know, I, I, I like, you know, just his, his approach, his, his, his chillness is cool, but still uh, no business. You know, he just, he want to teach, 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 you know, until we get it right, you know, uh, and he, he's leaning on, the, on us as much as we leaning on him, you know, so um, to continue to help each other out. You know, winning a championship has its privileges. It also gives you cachet. When you go to another team, you know, you walk in the room, they know that you're a champion. What part of the things that you learned in LA do you hope to apply here? Uh, that, that, that team chemistry, you know, I, I would say, you know, I talked about it uh, early. Um, the more we can, you know, be together, you know, you know learn each other, you know, uh, just pretty much do everything together. 
you know, I, the better we're going to be on the court together. You know, the more we can buy into the, the mentality of just we're going to defend, you know, together. You know, we, we, we help the helper uh, and, and we're going to move the ball on offense. You know, uh, once, you know, and once we learn to play together, I mean, I feel like we can be unstoppable. We, we have the talent. You know, we have the young guys that, that wants to compete. That's going to give you that 110 uh, percent effort. Um, and I just feel like we just got to put that chemistry together. You're a two-way player. Specifically, I want to know, like, on the defensive end, night in and night out, when you look at your assignment, how much of that is kind of like a film study or is it just the retention of competing against that guy for years? Like, how do you go about on that end of the field? Um, most of it is, 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 is film. Uh, and then after that, you know, it, it's who's going to compete the hardest, you know? Uh, and, I, and I take pride on that. You know, my, my, my defense, you know, uh, it's, it's going to be hard. I'm not going to just give you what you want. You know, I'm going to try to force you as, to do as much as uh, the, uh, the things I want you to do and then, you know, then you want to do. Um, and I'm going to apply the pressure all night, you know. So you're going you're gonna to feel me on your hip. You know, you're going to feel me chasing you. You know, I might be talking a little bit. I usually don't talk, you know, so... <laughs> I might be poking, you might be grabbing, you know, it, it might be a, a lot of things, you know, but you're going to, you're going to, you're going to feel me, you know, right on you the whole night. So I, I, I try to enforce that from the start. How did you know. start for it? I'm, I'm curious. You guys are boys, but I'm sure between the lines. Um, it, it, it's still competitive, but, you know, we, we, you know, I throw my joke here and there, you know, throughout the game, you throw in here, you know, we'll have a laugh in there, but it's competitive. You know, I, I don't like to be scored on. And I know he don't, you know, don't want to be stopped. So it's like, all right, let's see who, who, no, we don't grew up a little bit. You know, let's see who, <laughs> let's see who score. Like, you know, we get the stops and who scores, you know. Uh, but we also, we, we try to, you know, the time we have played against each other, you know, we just, we try to make it fun. But also, you know, we repeating against, uh, competing against each other. You know, we, I'm trying to get the win, he trying to get the win. So it's all boiled down to who wanted it most. I know you obviously haven't Uh, that does make a difference, uh, a, a big difference. You don't, I don't think nobody on the team is even 30. Like, so that, that makes a big difference. You know, we have guys that they got young, young vets, you know, that's, you know, that's what the oldest is, may, might be 29. I don't know. Uh, but then you got your, your guys, the young guys, you know, that, that wants to compete, that have that dog mentality. Uh, but like you said, like just that same age, like group, you know, we do listen to the same music, you know, we can come in the locker room, somebody could be playing music and we don't have to like ask who, who's playing it or like who's like change the song or something. Yeah, so we all just vibe into it, you know, even, uh, you know, um, just having conversation with each other, you know, it's, it's, it's about things of you know, our age group. You know things that we we are interested in, like right? uh, if somebody's trying to get to know someone another. You know they we sit and talk to each other. You know, is most of us has uh, most of us has kids. You know, or a wife or girlfriend. You know, we talk about family. So it's a lot of things that we talk about. You know, that we we pitch off each other. ACP, we're gonna go uh, to Zoom for your last question, and it's gonna come from Neil. Hey KCP. Um... You mentioned the players only meeting. I'm curious, is that somewhat atypical to have, you know, so early in the season? And was it mostly, is it fair to characterize it as just, you know, making sure everybody was on the same page? Um, I feel like, you know, the, the earlier the better. Um, the earlier we can, we can start building that chemistry in training camp, you know, even early before training camp, we know we have a lot of guys here. Um, I feel like the earlier the better, you know, the more we can, build each day, you know, get to know each other, you know, stop over somebody's house, you know, invite people over. You know, the more we can do that as a unit, you know, even come to practice, the more we can have meetings and talk about things, 
you know, what we want to do for the season or how we're going to do this, people roll. The dialogue we have amongst each other, you know, that, that comes a long way. You know, we can, you know, we can build, we can build off that, you know. All right, now I know Trez, you know, tendencies, you know, I know what makes him you no know, goals or I know if he's having a bad day, all right, Trez needs, needs a moment, you know, just an example. Um, you know, just, I, I feel like the earlier the better, always. Is that something that, you know, Brad or somebody else kind of spoke up and said, you know, hey, let's go ahead and, you know, get in a room and hash things out. And like you said earlier, the better or with somebody else? Uh, actually, this this wasn't Brad. It was, this, this was, one, this was Trez. So Trez, you know, called, and, and this, this meeting was actually on the court, you know, uh, right after we was done, you know, he just, Call all players, you know, coaches, you know, walked away. And we just had a, a talk amongst each other, you know. Uh, and the more we can continue to do that, you know, the, the better we're going to be.